Hello, selectors, and welcome back to the Life First podcast. I, that's me over here, over this one, this one here. This one, this one is me. I'm Andrew. And I'm Tiffany in the other frame. She's that one. That way, hold on. Wait, I'll get there. I'll get there. It's lower. That one. That one. <laughs> Welcome back to the Live First Podcast, a We Cross podcast where we talk about all the We Cross things and only the We Cross things. And we've got things. We've got, we've got so much that we can't pack this one into just a single That's podcast. right. Today is going to be part one of a two-parter. Mm-hmm. Um, so strap in, get We're... yourself a nice cup of drink, uh, make sure that you're driving safely if you're listening to us while you're driving. Yeah. And uh, Stop looking at the screen, guys. I mean, unless you're not driving. In which case, look at the screen, guys. Look, oh, we're gonna... Just be safe, whatever you're doing. Look at, this, look at how professional I am today. Boom! We've Whoa! got slides on the screen. Oh, yes, I know. I'm I'm evolving slowly. Evolving slowly. <laughs> Honestly, I'm really impressed with what you've been able to do with, with experimenting with OBS yeah. for, for this podcast. I refuse to edit, guys. I will not do it. It takes too much time, and I don't think it's fun, so I we, don't do it. We just don't have that kind of time. Uh... Hey guys, we're going to talk about some stuff today, yeah, and one of the stuff what we're going to talk about is <laughs> really in the middle of a podcast. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so unprofessional. Um, one of the stuff we're going to be talking about is uh, the Disona, Disona set that's Woo! coming out. Woo! This is a big one, you guys. It's Dissonance Diva. Yeah, and the, one, the main reason, spoilers, the main reason why we're splitting this into two podcasts is uh, unlike the last time we split something into two podcasts, which is just, it was mechanically complex last mm-hmm, time. Mm-hmm. This time we're splitting into two because, uh, spoilers, they're all just pretty good. Um, so there's a lot of stuff to talk yep, about. Yeah, <laughs> um, It's we'll, exciting. We'll go. I have some limited testing in it. Um, and I, I've been talking to some other people who have more testing than me in it. And uh, there's some there's some hot takes I suppose I could have, but we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, first things first, Tiffany. How was your We Cross week? It was extremely uneventful. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have something to show? You got show and tell though. Oh, I do have a show and tell. That's right. <laughs> I mean, okay. So I say it's uneventful because um, since coming back from the GP, as many of you know, it's kind of nice to like take some time off from the game and kind of let your brain refresh. Plus, there's been other things outside of the game that I've been focusing on, which has been nice to turn my attention to. I yeah. planted I planted rosemary in my garden the other day. That was really nice. Yeah. So, um, but I, I did... had to do all of the weeding, and because of that, you're not seeing me lift my arms up. <laughs> so back. You're very sore. They're down here for a reason. Shoulders so, is all I got. This is yeah. all I'm getting. Um, but I I was able to play play a game with uh. With you, um, yeah. one of our lunchtime games where I was, I played Mel, and mm-hmm. I do miss Mel, so I think I'm going to keep up with that. But the big news is that we finally have some show and tell, which I don't know, I can't remember if we showed this last time. I don't think so, because nope. the, they had it come in. But my prizes from the GP came in, and I want to show them to you all because I'm very excited about them. So we worked hard for those ones. We really did. Like we really did. So this is the Oh god, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for the crinkles if that's not your thing. But um check it out. This is the top what is it? Top 16? Top 32. 32 I this is that a top say. 32 play mat. And it's got all the Larigs on them. Like, it's quite a crowded space. But... Sure, you got three favorites, they're all he- they're here. Yeah, mine are right in the front, I just want to say. Because the best ones go up front, these guys. <laughs> I guess the only ones that are missing are, um, are Sambaka ones, right? Are they? That would make sense, just licensing. for licensing. Licensing law rules. Wasn't Mito on there? No. That's not Mito, is it? No. Okay. No, they're not on there. They're not on there. But yeah, the 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 canon we cross girls. Yeah, the canon we cross girls are all here, and it's got a big fat congratulations on the front, which is really fun. But and of course, and of course, Tiffany, they <laughs> they announced in Japan that Rico and and some of these other other uh, other you know selectors are now becoming L rigs. 
And, and so the word, this isn't even, this isn't even all of them anymore. We, like, we just got it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that when that when that set comes out, I'm just going to tape them onto the side. <laughs> you just Photoshop them in yourself. Yeah. Um, but that's not the one I'm actually excited about. <laughs> I'm more excited about the participation prize, which has my wife, Oodles, on the front of it. Absolute best girl. Look at her. She's so beautiful. She's so beautiful and ethereal. And what I appreciate about this one is that it has the We Cross Zones on yeah, it. Yeah, actually. So if you've ever played against us during competition, we have our own play mats. That we printed out that, that have, this, that have the zones, zones them. on them. Partially because they're good for teaching other people how to play. Like, yeah. The zones are stupidly helpful in those they're scenarios. Really helpful. But they also are, like, they just give you one less thing to think about during, like, competition play. Yeah. And that's really kind of nice. nice. I, I like it. Like, I'm a very, like, particular, organized person. So I like that I have, like, everything has its own little space. Like, you know what I yeah. mean? Um, so I really appreciate that this actually has the zones on it, um, and that they don't, like, intersect with her face. She's, like, kind of coming through. It's just really lovely. I really love this piece. Um, well, that's my show and tell. And then we got our, like, our cards, too. Like, our prize cards. Mm -hmm. Um, and I got, and I, because I got <laughs> best Tama player. I got, you did, you did. I got the here. latest, uh, sleeping Tama which I actually really like because I, I like her new outfit a lot. Oh, Are we going to find it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's one of these Tamas. We have our cards That's right next her, to us. Right? That's the cla no, 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 this classic. Hold on. Let me... So this is oh, the... I put it in your... I put it in your thing. I can grab it. I can grab it. Okay. So this is like the classic sleeping Tama, um, which is from like the first part of the, the first like two seasons of the anime where she has her white dress. And it is cute. Like, don't get me wrong. But I really like the new version of Tama with her new outfit. And especially with the team that I took to, excuse me, especially with the team that I took to GP, they all have like blue in them. So like, then this is the new one and she's really cute. I just love her fit. I love it so much. It kind of reminds me of, um... You tell this is a Tiffany deck because the back of the sleeve is also oodles. It's also oodles. <laughs> okay. And these are these are double sleeved for the sleeve. Because <laughs> these these are my end game sleeves. <laughs> um but yeah, I really I really like it. And it kind of reminds me of uh Hatsune Miku. Yeah. Because Hatsune Miku also has like a school like a digital like school uniform type thing. Yeah. So this is what they look like side by side it's really nice yeah and you might be wondering andrew where'd you get that deck box it's very cool it looks like the classic deck boxes that the the original the, the starter, starter decks. decks came into like it even has a cool graphic there color with the dream team on the front um i make them because i'm a dork and uh and and i want my decks to be in a very easily recognizable pile yeah when we have our gauntlet yeah because we've got like what did you say, like 20 of these boxes? Yeah, well, basically all the top tier decks are, are there for us to test with and get you guys the information. Which, speaking of which... Sorry, more crinkles. Let's talk about, um, let's talk about, let's talk about the new updates and, and the stuff. Let's talk about it. That is slides. what this podcast is about. That's true. So the first slide here is just a, they made a movie poster <laughs> out of the DeSoto. And it's like funny. And it's just like cute in all the dumb ways. Uh, so that's there. It's on their Facebook if you guys want to steal that photo there, too. Um, but the first thing that we probably should talk about, actually, is is, like um, is the color rules. Uh, yes. Those, those are lifted. Actually, they're lifted as of um, December. April 19th. Right. So, so not yet. Yeah, but a lot of stores are doing it anyways, which is fine. I know. I, 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 was, I was weird about it until the official announcement came out. Now I don't care. Because if it's been officially announced, they really could care less. Yeah. Prior to that, um, I don't know, you could get your, your, your promos pulled for doing wrong tournaments or something. So I, I just, you know, that was my big thing. 
Um, but and we also like there wasn't any guarantee that they would lift the color rules for, right. for the North American game. It makes sense that they would, so that the game stays unified internationally. Yeah. But also, like they've done weird stuff with right. with different regions before. Right. Like the the GPS have been run differently according Correct. to different regions. So we were. We were just playing it safe by being like, nothing's a guarantee until it's announced. And and it's not like it's not, there's no precedence for that. Yu-Gi-Oh, for example, does that, where they just have, they have different cards and it causes different meta stuff. But anyways, color rules are, are lifted. Uh, this is your chance to experiment with other things. Everyone's getting Exeus! <laughs> Cong yeah, congratulations. <laughs> Five color angels actually can exist. Um... I wanted to dedicate a slide to talking about it real quick. Um, okay. But I, I have a pretty cemented opinion as to the what the the color change rule does which is you might think and i think a, a common sentiment among the people who are poo-pooing the color restrictions being released which i should point out that this is actually we're just it's a return to form we cross was any color you wanted it to be mm. didn't have restrictions in it it was the diva format that started the restriction so while we've never seen wait really yeah, well, we've yeah. never seen differently. This is this is return form for We Cross. Oh, okay. Um, but the, I think the important thing to note here is a lot of people have said, well, it, doesn't that just make the best color, the best colors even better? And the answer is actually no, it doesn't. I I I have a little less experience in the Disona format as I do in the um, five color, uh, lifted mm -hmm. format that we're currently in. Um, I got, uh, my week cross week, by the way, uh, card garden. Um, I got to, I did really well. I won all my games with, uh, four color remember. And, uh, with the exception of pigeon, who, by the way, is currently the U S champion. Um, <laughs> and I lost to him barely because I think he had the, he just had one card that was a better tech against me. It was like super, 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 super close. Um, and, uh, he was also playing four color, four color remember. Mm -hmm. So I guess he was actually technically playing three color remember. Um, and that's where he had an edge against me was specifically just a little bit more lean on the white than me. Mm -hmm. Anyways, um, so I can say with certainty now that like the best deck, which in my opinion is Esper, doesn't get better that much with the color the the color restrictions lifted it gains access to red which means it can do some more damage like on its level ones which is great it is very good it's like the last thing the deck needed to be obscenely strong however that being said um the fact that every deck has access to exia now that every deck has access to ways to draw cards back to their hand uh, every deck has access to discard if it needs to add a little bit of a disruption thing. The fact that that every deck has access to all of the strats in the game now is actually means while Esper maybe um, gained a little bit of power, uh, all the other decks were like that were down here were like mm -hmm. and are like on par with it now. Maybe just slightly under, but it, the the gap between what is amazing and what isn't amazing now is small. I like that. Yeah. Because you're going to get so much more variety in the games, it's going to be way more fun. Right. I think the easiest way to make it, and I, I was trying to say something, uh, and I think I said it on, on one of my comments, is that single cards will become more obnoxious with this this change. Mm. Cards like Exia, Remember Memoria. Um, Ereshkigal. Ereshkigal. The, these... <laughs> the ultimate single. <laughs> sure. These 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 single single cards that you often see in the game will show up even more. Mm -hmm. um, and that doesn't make them obscene. It just means that now green decks have access to being able to play long game just like every, every deck can or something, you know? Like, green decks in particular want to usually be green-black based because those two colors really mesh well with each other. Mm -hmm. Forcing in the white you was fine, but it was awkward. It was always awkward. Well, because you had to have a white Lurig to do it. Right. And like, yes, there's white Lurigs that are good and there's white assist Lurigs that are good, but sometimes they don't mesh well with what the green center Lurig is trying right. to do. And and usually red meshes better with, with it, but, mm -hmm. but playing a red black green mm. deck 
was awkward because green green is not that great of a center color and red is not that great of a support color so it just it just didn't really work out all that well now with these color restrictions lifted you can throw exias in there you can guarantee that you're going to get to late game now just with the exias being an, a little bit of a of a flex thing and you will be able to play on the the common field so i think what i'm saying is single cards will show up more and for some people who feel like that's obnoxious it's going to feel obnoxious to you for everyone else um when you see the single cards show up more you'll also see that a wider variety of archetypes are showing up more mm -hmm. and that's good i think i think so too yeah i mean i know that some people um we're getting really annoyed with like the esper dominance the blue white black what have you combination dominance and like i can totally understand that for real like it it makes the game not very interesting mm -hmm. and it also makes the game like when you play it in in tournaments because you're like oh i'm gonna go up against like six of these types of decks you know and they're all the same center and like that's mm -hmm. boring and i don't like that either um so i think that this is going to add a lot more uh variety to the game which is cool because you end up seeing a lot more like kind of like really off the wall decks mm -hmm. which is way more fun they're more fun to play because kind of it i think it levels the playing field yeah. in a way because now everyone is trying to almost play like more reactively because you have to because you can't plan for everything mm -hmm. and i think it it um, not forces, but it encourages people to make a deck that they like mm -hmm. and stick with it and become the best at that particular deck. Yeah. Like, their, their brew. I think so. Which is really cool. And I and it just basically gives archetypes more freedom. So again, single cards, more obnoxious, archetypes, more freedom, and thus more powerful, which is good for the game. Yeah. Um, Let us know what you think about the, the color rule uh, in the comments down below. We love reading all of your comments and we would appreciate uh, your input. Another example of a, of a card that's going to be more obnoxious now is Super Ultra Superheroes. Ultra Superheroes is now one enter, vanish target Signy, mill them 10, and also get your best two off of the top five. It's a lot, but here's I thought the thing. you could only pick two. No, 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 no. It's, oh, it's, it's all three, it's all three now off? because it's, you're playing a blue piece, even though you're not playing any blue L rigs, but you have a white L rig, a black L rig, and a red L rig. Those pieces are all obscene now. Um, and here's I love the that you're using the word obscene like they're so, oh. they're so fucking good. Um, <laughs> so 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 so. Anyways, the the they're good. And and what's funny is that's not Esper though. That is that's red, black, white. Mm -hmm. So you have to play those three L L colors. Uh, that color combo hasn't been the best in a long time, and now it is pretty up there. Mm -hmm. It's pretty up there, just on the back of Yeah, it does kind of make you think what what pieces people will add to their deck where they did not have them before. Now they're going to be experimenting with a wider range of, especially Dream Team pieces. Yeah, try Colorful Ensemble, guys. It's really good if you're running, what is it, blue... Don't look at me. <laughs> blue, blue, green, red. Mm -hmm. uh, Ancient Surprise colors. Uh, because now you can run that and it, it bounces a Signy mm -hmm. for two, for two enter. It bounces a Signy, gives a Signy assassin and freezes target Elrig. That is Ooh. so much in two, two enter. And you can still play ancient echo as your second piece. It's, 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 That's... it's really good. Am now I gonna, is the time. Am I gonna bring back ancient surprise you could we'll you, you theoretically could what if i brought back ancient surprise but it was none of the ancient surprise girls ancient surprise new ancient surprise ancient, <laughs> new, in, surprise. new surprise recent, recent surprise, surprise. <laughs> that was your 3v3 name wasn't it still it is yeah anyways moving on from the uh color rules yeah let's get started shall we um so we're going to talk about all of the uh elric stuff and then we're going to talk a little bit about some of the the, the cards in this set the next set or the next um the next podcast we'll talk about the the rest of the cards we're gonna start off with um just two l rigs for for this um for this one uh it's not that all five aren't good they're all good um the deck techs are coming out right now so if you guys want a more in-depth understanding of how these l rigs work you can watch the deck techs i wanted to start with things that are going to probably have immediate success um 
in 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 locals and whatnot. Uh, and Miko Miko is one of them. Um, so getting into it, uh, Miko Miko is a level three Disona Elrig uh, that has the ability of at the beginning of your attack phase, if there are two or more Disona Signy on your field, uh, choose one of the following: your opponent discards a card, or your opponent may pay one if they don't they only draw one card during uh their next draw phase so you can either limit their the amount of draw that they have on mm -hmm. their turn or you can make them discard cards which is great limiting draw seems devastating um often you get into these scenarios where discard decks have discarded your opponent out to zero and mm -hmm. then i mean what does the discard do that's a defense against discard have no cards in hand that's not a defense against this one. This one then says, okay, cool, I'll limit what you can do there. Or I'll enter burn you, which is fine too. Your enter is draw two, unless your opponent discards two cards. Your opponent's probably not going to discard those cards, so it's probably draw two. Mm -hmm. But that's fine. Drawing two is still good. Um, and then you your... drawing one? No, it's draw two. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, and then your exceed four, which generally speaking is a once per game effect. Uh, it put... is a once per game effect. You can only exceed four once. Currently, yeah. I mean, they, I don't know. They they haven't made any ways. Currently, oh my god! It doesn't say. I'm just literally saying it doesn't say once per game on it. Okay, so if you find some way to get back, to put yeah. Re... Oh wait, isn't there a way that you can replay cards from your Larig trash? I don't know yet. Not not yet. Anyways, yet. So, but it's a design space they could move into. So theoretically, this could do more often. Right now, though, it's once per game. Yeah. Um, exceed four to put target signal on the opponent's field to the bottom of their deck unless it pays unless they pay colorless, colorless, four. colorless, colorless, which they'll rarely have in, if you build your deck correctly. By by that time, yeah, especially especially with the way that people have been playing. I mean, just someone's going to change the way people play. Yeah, it will. Yeah. Um, because this is such a powerful format. Right. Um, but um, yeah, paying paying four to save a single a single signy is a lot. A lot. Yeah. Um, then it's also worth mentioning that all these centers have a partner signy with them. That's something that I, we're going to see moving forward. That they're generally speaking doing. Uh, Isn't this kind of like the uh, team signy that we used to see in the beginning of the format? Yep, yeah, just less restrictive requirement, which is better. Yeah. Um. So this one is Miko fan. I love this. Um, I wish they all came with fans. Yeah, I, I don't know if you remember, but do do you remember uh, the Takarotomi, um, the Takarotomi uh, representative who came to RGB? Mm -hmm. He was wearing this. Uh, this. That's. Do you, do you remember it now? The, the pink, That's the so pink cute. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want one. I do too. I think they're cool. Wait, can I have one, please? If I, if I play this at the next GP, there's a fair chance I will make. I I want one. That looks made so. That outfit looks really comfortable. Um, I might I might do it. You should. Um, I don't I don't cosplay unless it's comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one's a level three blue Disona. Uh, ten thousand power. It has light burst. That light burst is freeze target Elrig on your opponent's field. Notably, not down it. It's just freeze it. It would be great if it was down and freeze it. Does not do that. I don't think any freeze Larigs down. I don't think they do either. But anyways, um, it's got an auto at the beginning of your attack phase. If Miko Miko is on your field, your opponent gains a Miko Miko defense squad. Let's take a break real quick. That's a token that you give your your opponent. I put it down here as a as a little thing. Uh, its ability. Oh, that's what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. Its ability is auto at the end of your turn. That's the opponent's turn. Uh, discard one card from their hand and then they can remove this token. So if they don't discard a card, the tokens start adding up. And then if they if they get to the end of the turn, they have three cards in hand, but they also have three tokens, they discard all three tokens, or they, they, they discard all three cards, and then all three tokens go away. Mm -hmm. So it's another way that you're also future discarding if you need to. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's one of its abilities. Its other abilities is the one that you can do for anything if you don't have Miko Miko on the field. Uh, when it attacks, you can choose one of the following. Your opponent discards a card, uh, or if you have three or more cards in your hand than the opponent, then this gains Shadow Signy until the end of your opponent's next turn. It's a lot to discuss in, in these centers. That they're loaded because of these um, these these um, Signy that they get access to. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the Signy don't necessarily make the Elrig. The Elrig makes the Signy, but the Signy certainly helps. 
you know, that's kind of the way that we should be treating these as well. Yeah. And um, for what it's worth, Miko Miko Level 3 has a lot of the same notes that Madoka has. The Madoka that just won the championship in the United States. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so, as such, it's, it's worth mentioning it's probably powerful right off the bat. Um... Being able, you, I think you need to, to, to use Miko Miko in a deck that's also enter starving your opponent a little bit because it it has some taxing stuff that it needs to do. Um, and discard is not always known for its enter starving. The two and two don't no, it's No, it's incredibly indirect to the point where I wouldn't say that discard enter starves. It can. In extreme cases, like, the less cards your opponent can play, the less cards end up in their enter. Mm -hmm. But that also doesn't stop them from enter charging every turn. Right. And also, the less cards you vanish off the field, the more cards stay in their hand. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it doesn't always play nice with enter starving. Um, enter burning with this, however... It's pretty direct. <laughs> or taxing in white. Those things yes. probably pair well with this. Yeah. Um, anyways, this is, this is a card, it's gonna discard your, your hand completely. Uh, it's very good in that frame. It's gonna, it's gonna try to strangle your resources. There are weaknesses to this one. Uh, it, the one glaring thing is as Madoka doesn't have, it, it doesn't freeze the L-Rig. Now, it's Signy Life Burst freezes the L-Rig. Not downing it is not great, but it's okay. You can't control it. Well, um, and... I mean, if the, if the Life if it's a life burst that freezes the rig on the opponent's field, I don't actually think that the timing is all that terrible because it still puts a little bit of a catch-22 yes. onto your opponent. Yes. So I don't have a problem with this. I understand that we all want to down and freeze things because it's far more efficient. Mm -hmm. It's a it's more or less guaranteed unless you're going against something that can up Signies regardless of their phase. Sure. Um, but I don't, I don't think that there's anything wrong with it. No, I don't think so either. I just will say this. Um, stuff that does indirect resource gaining in, in Lee Cross, namely drawing cards, drawing, drawing, um, or gaining enter, uh, and freezing the opponent's salary, stuff like that, that's indirectly good, but it's not directly good. Mm -hmm. These are better over the course of the long game. We're talking turn six, seven, eight, right? And when they don't immediately say something like vanish target Signy, right? That protects you from damage because you're getting hit with damage and that's the time for those things to kick in. Mm -hmm. They're worse in the shorter games, the turn four or five formats. Um, Disona may be a turn five form format. So I will say that Miko Miko, Miko fan is probably something at some point I'm probably going to be running more two or three of probably not a full set of four because mm -hmm. i i think overloading on miko fan is not where i want to be at that's that's not the signy that i would put a four of in the if i had a limited amount of four of slots which you do yeah this wouldn't be the one that i would put four of in. Yeah, yeah, i would yeah. save that for things like the bigger heavier hitters like exias or or remembers yeah. or your actual win condition cards yeah. i agree mm -hmm. i agree um, moving on, we've got Hanyo, Tragic. Tragic uh, Flame Dance. You want to read this one? Sure. So this is your level three Hanyo Lurig, um, Disona Signy, or sorry, Disona Lurig. Mm -hmm. Auto, at the beginning of your attack phase, if all Signy on your field are Disona, you may pay one red, one colorless. If you do, target Signy on your field gains Assassin or Double Crush until the end of turn. Action uh, once a turn, discard a card, draw a card, or enter charge one. Not bad. Uh, action, exceed four, crush one of your opponent's life cloth. Direct. Directly. Mm -hmm. Just exceed four, crush that sucker. Yep. Honestly, not bad. This is very, this is classic red. Um, like, red, we love giving things assassin, assassin or double crush. We love being able to discard a card to, um to either uh, filter our hand mm -hmm. or enter charge one, which just allows you to burn more things. 
Um, and then crushing one of your opponent's life cloth directly is pretty pretty good. Yep. Um, this is kind of like, uh, I always forget the name of that piece that crushes an opponent's life cloth. Oh, Entwined Supremacy? Yeah, so this is kind of like Entwined Supremacy, except with Entwined Supremacy, first of all, you're paying Enter instead of Exceeding. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a little bit more efficient in that respect. Um, however, with Entwined Supremacy, you can stop uh, life bursts by paying. Um, and this one you can't, so just keep that in mind. Well, if that's a thing you want, maybe you should read the, the partner signy. Let's read the partner signy, shall we? Seek love, disown a crystal brilliance. Cute. Oh, and it's a jewel type signy. That makes sense. All right, so this is your uh, level three, uh, 12,000 disona signy. Uh, auto, at the beginning of your attack phase, if all Signy on your field are Disona, and there are two or more cards in your opponent's Enter Zone, your opponent chooses a card from their Enter Zone and puts it into their trash. Auto, whenever the Signy crushes one of your opponent's life cloth, if Hanio Tragic Flame dances on your field, the crushed card's life burst does not activate unless your opponent pays one. Mm -hmm. uh, life burst, draw two cards, and Enter Charge one. And yeah, not three. or all three. Like that's such a powerful life burst. I think it's powerful in a long game. I don't think it's powerful in a short game. For maybe sure. not, but like draw. So you you're gaining three cards off of this. Yeah, you're gaining two in your hand and one in your enter. Yeah, and for red, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, so this is great. I think um, there's an argument to be made that to that aggro decks because their short game want the resources now and don't really care about defensive life bursts. In which case, I think that argument's valid. Here's the thing about that second auto, though. It says whenever this Signy crushes one of your opponent's life cloth. Right. So it has to be the Seek Love Signy that is crushing the life cloth, not the Hanio ability. That is correct. I do like that it makes your opponent pay for it. Yeah. Whereas with, um, with the piece you have to pay to stop the the life burst and i always was kind of like yeah like yeah why am i paying for this you know like i already I'm, paid for my piece i already paid for the piece <laughs> exactly like that's how i feel so i like that this that this puts the taxes back on your opponent it's very good which works well with its also front ability because it also enter burns one mm -hmm. so theoretically you're you're double you're, taxing your opponent yeah this is this has big like white taxing blue taxing vibes but now we're getting red taxes too I agree. and the taxing comes in the form of enter burning instead of just you know telling your opponent they have to do things you yeah know? and and uh i i think this is also one of the the signy that you probably have two of in your deck like i would cut three and four this is not a four of for me in this in this deck hanio though itself is is powerful enough that even though Seek Love, in my opinion, isn't super powerful, uh, Hanio is, good is so strong on its own. Yeah, she um, is. So, so there's often things that you want to do with red, and clearly all of them are, are present, like you said. Crush your opponent's life cloth at, for an easy cost. Awesome. Um, being able to get Assassin and Double Crush. Awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, I think an unsung hero is that once per turn ability of being able to discard a card and draw a card, red doesn't have access to hand filtering very much and this is their version of hand filtering and it's actually not bad it's 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 free you're basically you should use it every turn to try to trash your worst card in your hand for a better card um or mm -hmm. you can enter charge with it which helps because hanio's ability of paying red colorless is actually kind of expensive for red yeah i mean to do we're it we're used to red paying like one to do right, something right right so so getting double crush is super great right like you you want to be doing that damage and and when it's possible to get double crush trust me it's going to be worth it um mm. however assassin is no slouch on its own assassin allows you to get more damage than you would it's safer than you normally would and also enter starve your opponent potentially mm. for that seek love to um kick in as well so it's i i think everything in hanyo is good not to mention Dissonant in general, and this is something you guys are going to see in a second. Dissonant in general are just more aggressive Signy. Yes. Like, I, this putting, is aggressive. Yeah, putting Dissona in a deck immediately makes your deck more mid-range 
even if it's the most controlling deck in the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not, which is not a bad thing. We cross rewards you for that kind of stuff. Um, so I think Hanio is going to be a pretty big standout star for this. Yeah, it's it's nice to see Red have a have a, a center Signy that's actually going to do the thing. Yeah. And I think that Hanio is going to do the thing. Yeah. Also, the way that, like, this is an art note, um, the way that the flower is painted on the top of Hanio's hat, beautiful. Yeah, it's really Like, nice. that is exquisite. Nice little break from, from just the red and the black, too. Yeah, like, really, really nicely done. Um, yeah. Moving on to a blue card. Here's a card that you and I both played already. Uh, in Neat's 3v3 tournament, we have the mm -hmm. pleasure of being able to uh, test this card out ahead of time. Uh, <laughs> and woof. And it is a card. It's 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 got some it is a card. It's got some variance to it. It doesn't sure. it doesn't always hit, but when it hits, man, it hits like a truck. <laughs> um it's like a freight train. Uh for those people who watch football in the 90s. Um <laughs> it's like oh god. It's like a truck. Like truck coon. It's just... You get Isekai after this. Really though, really though, that is that is kind of what it feels like. There there are instances where like um this has triggered and it feels rude. Like it feels it feels rude. Like as a as a player playing it, I'm just like, I I don't even I'm sorry, like I don't even know what to say. Yeah, there was one time um I was talking to Pigeon, he was like, Yeah, I hit this and I put out a Hanio. Or he put he put out a Haniel. And the, then, oh. then, and then oh. he hit a Haniel Life Burst, which then put out, uh, like, something that, like, maybe an Oigana, I don't remember the entire story, but he blocked one lane mm -hmm. and used its Enter ability to kill another thing's damage, and then the second Hanyo Life Burst, because he got two of them from it, yeah. he, he got a guard off of it, so he just ruined this person's turn. Um... Anyway, we should talk about the card itself. Brutal. Uh, it's a very, very simple. It's wordish, but it's very simple in in retrospect. Uh, your level one. Do we one, have the translated names? No, I don't have the translated names right now. Okay. It's its name is Eldora. <laughs> it's um, the Eldora assist line. Uh, this first one is uh, it enters. You draw a card, uh, so you get a little bit of card advantage. More importantly, you get to look at the top card of your life pop. You see if that's a good life burst. If it is, uh, great. If it's not, you shuffle. Um, then immediately afterwards on your defense turn, that's when you use your Eldora level 2. Eldora level 2 basically says any time a life burst would trigger this turn, it triggers twice. So that's why you're trying to stack your life burst to mm -hmm. be good. You also need to use better life bursts than you would normally. So advantage target up is, is fine here, um, but, and like the fill-in lane things are a little bit worse because you rarely can fill in two lanes, you know, mm -hmm. but they're fine. Um, drawing two cards off this life burst, like being able to like hit a life burst that says draw two cards sucks with this. You don't want to draw, you want to be defensive with, with I this. I mean you do have you do have the ability of um you have the possibility of drawing guards off of that. Sure. But you're already taking damage from the field yeah. you before take, you can use your guards. You would take less damage if you had you had an Exia and you were able to you know, kill two. Which is what two I two ended two. up doing. Yeah, and yeah. that felt really rude. Like um, bouncing two things when you hit it early is is pretty devastating. And that's what you try to set up, right? And that's why people often use fur and slash with this because it can bounce anything. It doesn't mm -hmm. have the opt ability. Yeah. Um its other enter ability is crush your uh life cloth. Uh crush one of your life cloths, uh you shuffle your deck, add add the card, top card of your deck to your life cloth. Mm -hmm. So basically it's a free enter charge too. So while it seems like the grow cost for this is zero and zero, it's actually a net positive because you, you gain an enter when you crush your own life cloth. Um, and generally speaking, you're hoping that life cloth that you crush is going to have an ability. If it doesn't, okay, cool. One of your further life cloths, if they have an ability, will will be able to trigger. Yeah, it does say this turn whenever your life burst triggers. Right, right, right. So that's whenever you, you get a life burst off of a crushed life cloth, yeah. including the second enter ability for you. Eldora... It, excels when you need enter quickly and also when you need when you build your deck to have really strong life bursts in the middle of it mm -hmm. so that's that's what eldora's function is going to be moving forward it's going to be uh assist rig i think you'll see quite often yes um moving it's along it's going to be fun uh we're finally getting into the dissonance signy themselves um so uh 
I have these broken up into something different than we've ever done before, which is instead of talking about single cards and about why they're good, we're going to talk about blocks of cards and how Ooh, they work together. Disona, card blocks. Disona basically function as packages, and you can take these packages and put them into your deck. If you're like, I need more aggression, you can take this, right? Another one in here, for example, is stats, right? Or walls. Um, and we're going to talk about all of them. And, and you take certain pieces of these packages and you take maybe package one package two package three oh look at that you have a 40 card deck um so that's sort of how disona work um because disona are also very parasitic in their their design space Aha, i'm using i'm using developer terms parasitic in their design space uh which means that it is very um they they like to have other disona they don't play well with basically anything else. So when you're playing a Disona deck, you're generally speaking, with a couple exceptions, playing almost all Disona, always. Hmm. Um, so we're going to review all of these cards in terms of what they are in blocks, you know, like what packages they are. And then when the next Disona set comes, I'm just going to add to these and talk mm -hmm. about which new cards break it and which cards fall away. Yeah. So the first one is Aggression. I thought this was the, the best one to start with because... Lordy, if you're playing Disona, you get aggression. You True. get strong lane clearing abilities. I mean, insanely strong lane clearing abilities. Better than we've ever seen and better than we're going to see for quite a while, I think. Mm. Um, so you're going to be able to almost always blow holes into the opponent's lane if you are um, doing this. If, that, if you're a control deck, that basically means that you're almost always guaranteeing an open lane uh, to do safe damage in. If you're an aggro deck, it means you're almost always going to be guaranteeing all lanes open. Which is good. Which is good. I mean, both ends are great. The trade-off on that is that you're going to be giving your opponent enter. Um, however... And life first chance. And life first chance. However, if you win the game before it becomes a problem, then it's not a problem. Exactly. That, that is, that <laughs> That's is like the, typical like aggro the mindset. mindset. <laughs> um, turns out winning the game is a good thing. Um, so let's talk about these these uh, these aggro cards. Sure, let's read them off. Do them, you do one, I'll do one? All right. Cool. Yeah, starting with uh, Rill at the top, uh, or at the at the furthest to the left. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is a level 1, 2,000 power Signy auto whenever the Signy attacks. If you have another Disona Signy on your field, you may pay one red, one colorless. If you do, vanish target Signy on your opponent's field with power 8,000 or less? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so... I'm already a big fan of Parajulius, and this is Parajulius without with that with less hoops to jump through. This is just like very good. I know. And, pay, and pay two, and you you can vanish something six times its size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and guys, Parajulius never got the the play that it really. Well, deserved. not six, four times its size. Because it's because it's Parajulius is green, um, and also you needed to enter charge, uh, but. Parajulius opened almost all lanes you could ever hope to. And the greatest thing that you could attach it with was red or 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 um red or uh black, because they don't hit as high numbers as mm -hmm. Parajulius did, this 8,000 or less. So this card, just by virtue of being red, complements red decks, because often red can't hit that high. No. 8,000 or less clears things into really almost late game. And we've talked about this in the podcast before for the earlier sets of the D.Va format that um, red kind of tends to hit something from like uh, an X amount of number um, or less. Mm -hmm. And then green would hit things from an X amount of number or higher. And then there was this weird middle ground where neither yeah. of the colors could touch. And this fills that gap yep. by like... A wide, a wide margin. margin. I agree. And like this is crazy looking at this because we're also used to red having things like Lancelot, mm -hmm. a classic, or Ramel, and both of those signies, well, Lancelot's a trade seas, yeah. right? Yeah. So you pay you pay red mm -hmm. and you can well, I don't know if it's red. Colorless. Colorless. So you pay a you pay one colorless and this 5,000 Lancelot vanishes a 5,000 or less Signy. Yeah. It's kind of an even trade. Um, Rommel is a 2,000 and it van vanishes 3,000 or yeah. less. So it hits a little bit above its own mark. This goes 
like above and beyond. Above and beyond. Yeah, and, and two is a lot, but it fits the bill more often than you think it would. But you brought up Lancelot and, and Rommel, and let me introduce you to their uh, new sister, uh, Firecracker is the name for this one. So Firecracker is got an enter ability 2000 level 1, um, which is you discard a Dissona from your hand, banish target Signy with power 5000 or less. As a 2000 power level 1 Signy. Yeah, Insane. as a level 1 Signy. I, I mean, and the fact that it basically is like, Wigona was obscene for, for hitting 3000 3, or less. Um, just and to you, discard just, And you discarded a black card, so it was more narrow. This yeah, you like, discard any Dissona, and again, this is if you're playing a Dissona deck, you're playing this. You're playing a so you're lot of Dissona. <laughs> discarding a card. Yeah. Um, and you vanish target Sydney power five thousand or less. Five thousand um, or less. Like this, this level one takes out your level two Lancelot. Yeah, yeah. To be to be clear, um, I I have been putting this in all of the builds of my um of my uh aggro decks and my mid range decks and my control decks. <laughs> this card mm -hmm. hits so well. And so easily and so cheaply that it's worth putting in every single Dissona deck, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. It is the standout card of the set. And lucky for everyone, it's a common. So you, you're you going to get four at least. You're going to see a lot of these. Yeah. You're going to see some firecrackers. Moving on to this lovely level one green Signy. Werewolf. Right? Werewolf, is that the name? That's the name. All right, cute. I like it. I like her fit. Um, so level one, 3000 power green Signy werewolf. Mm -hmm. um, its enter ability is put one Dissona card from your enter zone into the trash. This Signy gets constant as long as the Signy in front of this Signy is level one. This Signy gets Lancer till end of turn. We love on demand Lancer. We love on demand Lancer. Uh, however, its constant ability is the Signy can only attack once, which sure. is interesting. Yeah, it's, they just limit. The, got it. They got to keep green down somehow. <laughs> uh, no, this is this is the best green card probably to date. This is the best green card I think, to date. I think I might, I might be saying the truth there. Yeah, that I think this is might be a... the best green card to date. Let us know in the comment section down <laughs> below if you agree, because that's that's a real statement. Um, uh, barbarian was good. Barbarian sure. was extra held back by the fact that you had to pay green. You had to pay two green. No, 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 it was just green. Was but, it just but, one green? But oh, it, I'm confusing it was still, with Centurion. It was still green, but you had to pay. Yeah. And um, that actually. Would, did, in practice, just, did not help. This is just Dissona. Right, which could be any color. Which could be any color, especially with... The color restriction. Color restriction, whatever. Yep. Um, yeah, no, this seems great to me. Um, being able to lance, Lancer away um, and not having to target anything to do it. A, another level one, especially in the late game, mm -hmm. because you're, there's so many 3-3-1 three, three, fields that, are, that could be really devastating. Yeah. And just being able to put this onto the field and be like, mm, no, you didn't. Yeah, and and it's worth mentioning. And I'm gonna crush a lot. Of these are the probably the four most common cards you're gonna see in Dissona because they're the four best ones. Mm -hmm. Um, and guess what? They're all three thousand or less. So they're all level. <laughs> they're ones. they're all get lancers. Yeah. Um, the next one is Musica. Uh, it's three thousand power, uh, level one. Put a Dissona from your enter zone to your trash target Signy on your opponent's field gets negative three thousand fill up a turn. Um. We've had this ability with uh, costing one colorless and giving 2,000, and it was always bad. Mm -hmm. 3,000 was always the margin it needed to hit, and we never had access to it until Oigona. Um, and now we have access to it outside of Oigona. Yeah. So you just pay a Dissona from your enter. Mm -hmm. Target Signy gets minus 3,000 power. Bingo. Which can not only like just banish certain level ones, like all the level ones right here that we're showing you yep. would just die to yep. this um but also it can knock a lot of things back into vanishing range correct that is also true right if you need to lower it for something else yeah so things that are like uh what's it called like anna mirage mm -hmm. is a 13 no it's not it's a 10 10K. it's much easier to deal with okay. now um moving on uh i i wanted to specifically call out the level ones here i'm going to call out the uh level twos and spells now Ooh. so we've got some we've some got some here. spells on the list yeah, this is yeah, so yeah. fun we've got hanyo's spell i think this is called park opening or pack pack opening i don't, I don't know in japan it, it changes its name in english um it costs one red sorry red just red Mm -hmm. Um, and you get the following ability. Target Dissona on your field gets the, uh, once per turn ability of when the Signy attacks, banish target Signy on the opponent's field to power 10,000 or less until end of turn. 
Um, so it gains that ability. Uh, so it's giving Signes an ability. Right. And it's worth mentioning that red spells up until this point have had some kind of special thing to make it 12k or less or 10k or less, but it's always been very restrictive. You've got to run like Team, for example, in order for for uh, Hirana's ability to do it, Deafening Inferno or whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. um, the This has just 10,000 or less, period. So it is it is the biggest red has been able to hit easily it's yet. So it's also got a life burst, Vanish targets up Signe on your opponent's field. Yeah, Vanish target upped is kind of like it's, like, it's literally it, the it has a, it has a chance to fail but it's it's a decent life burst we love to see it you know agreed could be vanished target signy but we'll take target up yeah this next one's honore do you want to talk about sure so this is your level two black 5000 power signy uh auto at the beginning of your attack phase target signy on your opponent's field gets minus 1000 power until end of turn for each other Disona Signy on your field. Yep. Which, if you are playing Disona, it's probably going to be negative three. Yeah. Um, I think it's negative two, because it it's each other. Each other Disona. Each so. other. Okay, so, so up to up to minus two. Yeah, it helps you, it helps you finish out other things, uh, which is fine. I think eventually this this Signy will fall off on this list, but for now, yeah, it's a Disona Signy that does the job. So it's it's pretty good. Uh, it's not quite as good as the Black Tama's spell, which is free, uh, by the way. Uh, it's free, and it says target uh, Signy on your opponent's field gets a negative, uh, negative 1,000 for each Disona on your field, which is often... For... So that's minus three. Yeah, that's, well, that's that, the Well, that would be up to minus three. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like versus target up Signy on the opponent's field gets negative 15k. So just... See you later, die. remember. Yeah. Well, very... remember's not upped. Oh yeah. Mel. <laughs> Mel Stove. Mel Stove is 15k. <laughs> it's a new Signy that's going out. We'll, we'll see you later. Soon. Yeah. Yeah, no, that'll that'll pretty much remove anything off the field unless you're still playing like what is it? Like Terror Beasts or something. Yep. Yeah. No, that that'll that'll do it. That'll do it. Um now we're in the level three aggression slot. Like there's an, and then after this, there's still another slot. Tiffany, there's so much aggression in this set. This is a very aggressive format, which I actually think is cool because we've been seeing a lot of a very like control heavy to Correct. to mid range heavy. I will agree. Format. Um, I don't think that that's anything someone could argue with. No. Uh, but the thing about those is that they end up being longer games. Right. So the games have recently been going to turn like seven. Mm -hmm. And I think that the Disona, um, that the the introduction of Disonas is going to shorten the games because of how aggressive it is. I agree. And I think that that's going to be something that will be very interesting and very fun to see, especially for a person such as myself that likes playing more aggressive games. <laughs> um, also, look at the artwork on these level threes. Like, yeah, so pretty fun. Pretty good. Pretty good. You want to read uh, Donna? Yeah, I'll read Donna. So this is your level 3 white uh, Signy, 10,000 power, Disona. Constant, during your opponent's turn, other Disona Signy on your field get plus 3,000 power during your opponent's turn. It's pretty great. Yes, it's nice. Um, auto, whenever Lurig on your field attacks, you may down two Disona Signy on... <laughs> you may down two upped Disona Signy on your field and pay white colorless... If you do, up the Lurig that attacked, and it loses its abilities until end of turn. What Lurig does that sound like? <laughs> I don't know. You, uh, it's nothing you play, I'm sure, it's No, I'm certainly, sure it's not. <laughs> certainly not. Certainly couldn't be Tama, this, this Signy just giving Tama's abilities away for free. <laughs> hey, not for free, but yeah. <laughs> so like you, yeah. Just, you just put this card in your deck, and uh, boom. Your Lurig becomes Tama. Yeah, the cool thing is this card um, does two things uh, for people. Uh, I you really only you're really only going to see it in two scenarios. Scenario one, you're an aggro deck and you want extra damage per turn. Um, if you uh, you're gonna find that this can do the job if if you if you like are are finding your lanes blocked right. But generally speaking, this ability, even though we see it on Tama often, isn't usually an aggro ability. It's usually a control ability. Um, but 
Tama has the <laughs> Tama has the ability to also up everything, so you get a free super aggro turn, mm -hmm. which is why Tama works so well in aggro. Mm -hmm. Usually, again, you see this in in control because in control they want to up their damage output, but safely up their damage output. So if they've discarded your hand away, you have no guards. That means this is a safe damage output, mm -hmm. right? So you get to attack with your L rig before your L rig actually does damage, aka hit a life burst. Um, you up your L rig. So, and everything's down, so you're usually safe to most life bursts now, right? And you get yeah. your extra damage, and that's where Donna's really going to shine. Um, but, spoiler, uh, white, for the first time in its life, is not the best color in the set. It's actually the worst color in the set. I know, this is the first time we've seen a white card. We've seen more green cards than the white right now. <laughs> Thank so, goodness, because it was about time. I know. So it's, it's, this is, this is one of those ones where, uh, control in a Disona deck is not the greatest, but mm -hmm. it can exist. Mm -hmm. Um, moving on to Umir. Look we've at got, her, she's so cute. I know, she cute, she cute. Um, she is a, uh, Disona level three, power 10,000, has the ability of whenever this Signia attacks, if there are 10 or more Disona in your trash, you're in black, it's not that hard to do. Um, you can pay black if you do target to so target Signy on the opponent's field gets negative ten thousand till end of turn. Yeah. Higher than black usually does as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um usually that number is like eight, eight six. K. Yeah. yeah. Um those are literally the two numbers I was thinking too. Six and eight. I was six like, yeah, eight. it's usually it, it's usually the trade there. Um you also get an action. Uh you can discard two dissona from your hand and you can put this card from your trash to the field. So neatly pays for itself, allows you to toolbox with this. A deck that doesn't have a ton of damage output could use this in just in its trash to basically be like, ah, I'm going to do this. Again, I think more of a control card or a mid-range card than an aggro card. It works fine in aggro. Um, but the deck that's really going to want to see this is the deck that has a lower amount of damage output and would like to be able to pull this from the trash more mm -hmm. often. That's where it's really going to shine. Bang, however... Also, first of all, we need to talk about Bang's art. How oh, great. We need to Fantastic. we need to just take a moment oh, yeah. and appreciate Good job, Bang. Like the art for this level three Signy. Wow. Yeah, and Bang is coming out swinging. And I'm gonna read this one because I love Bang. <laughs> you um, wouldn't let me read Umer. I made a mistake. <laughs> I'll let you have it because I love you. Uh, no, do you want Bang? You can have Bang. No, 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 you read it. I, okay. want, I want you to read it, but with feeling. All right. Bang is, first off, a demon. Cool. Um, <laughs> and it's also a Disona level 3 green uh, power 12,000, mm -hmm. uh, which means it's big. Uh, these other ones were 10,000. She's a big Bang. Yeah, big Bang. Um, it's got the constant ability, as long as there are three or more Disona in your enter, it gets plus 3,000 power and shadow level 3 or more Signy. Uh, so very big bang. Turn can go into 15k, which is ginormous. Um, I don't think you're gonna have hit that very often. Having three enter in your enter at all any point in time, it except for super tricky. late game, is it difficult. Can be but it's one. It's it's uh, once per turn action ability is <laughs> is really where it shines. Um, Sorry, y'all. <laughs> the pollen has uh, been really bad lately. Paying a green and colorless to make your opponent choose a Signy from their field with power 10,000 or more and put it into their enter zone. <laughs> it's around so many weird keywordings, mostly Exia. Um, oh yeah, because it says your opponent chooses a Signy. Correct, it's they not, don't target it. Like, you're not targeted anything. Right. You're putting the responsibility back onto your it gets. Opponent. I think it gets, if I remember correctly, it gets written around um, H2O as well. Because H2O says if it would leave the field due to an opponent's effect. <gasps> This is technically your cho choosing. I I don't know. Neat, if you're it, if you're watching, yeah, you can, you can it, make a choice. Is it? Isn't it your opponent's effect? Because your opponent's effect is forcing you to choose. Something I don't. To I don't remove? know. I don't know. I I yeah. Neat. Get in the comments and correct me, please. Yeah. <laughs> um. But there there's there's I'm just saying there's a lot of things that get around. For example, it also doesn't vanish. It just puts it into the enter zone. Um, that's so true too. That, it gets around weird, like um, Notre Dame is the one that says yeah, when it would get vanished. When it would get vanished, or you know, whatever. Yeah, Miko Miko's uh, ability, Sydney. But it would trigger things like when this leaves the field. Yes. So there are like Signies that have like if this were to leave the field abilities yes. instead it doesn't. Yeah. So wouldn't something like soft boiled egg 
solve something like this? Correct, yes. Okay. Yes. I mean, your opponent shouldn't choose something was Well, I guess... Well, I guess they could. I guess they could, because then they nothing the would have to leave the field. Yeah, it just... It gets around a lot of things. Just think It gets around that. Shadow, for example. So if you kill oh, the thing yeah. that doesn't have Shadow, and the only option left is to choose the thing that has Shadow, it gets around it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. Um... So there's a lot there's a lot of good things going for Pan here. Uh definitely one of the this is the best green spin in a while. Um we're gonna find out some more cards in a in a little while. Justice but, for green. But green, I think, is now a very, very, very real support color. Because you also have Mel as an assist line to put in and just will Solid always make choice. will always make any deck better by having the assist line be Mel. Mm -hmm. um, so between Werewolf and Bang, you're already almost there. Spoilers, there's gonna be a there's going to be an inner charge couple of cards down the line that also make this a very valid choice to to bring in. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think green green is going to show up in a lot more decks finally. Um, You're going to see it in mine. Like I'm just I'm, I want to play more green. Yeah. <laughs> this, this set. Moving to the next slide where we're going to be the last slide for aggression. Peace. I know after four, we've got two pieces to talk about. Let's talk about them. I want to talk about the first one. So this is a green piece that costs one green, a mm -hmm. single green. It is a Disona piece with main phase timing called Lancer in the Dark. Speak to me. Use conditions, dream team. You have three Lurig on your field with three or more different colors among all members. Yeah. So your normal, your normal condition, you gotta play rainbow. Mm -hmm. So, shuffle all the cards in your in your trash into your deck and enter charge two. Then put up to two target Disona Signy from your enter zone onto your field. Then target Disona Signy on your field gains S Lancer until end of turn. That's Super Lancer, which it explains. Whenever a Signy on your field with Super Lancer vanishes a Signy on your opponent's field through battle, if your opponent has Life Cloth, crush one. If there are none, deal damage to your opponent directly, which Super Lancer, unlike regular Lancer, can, can end the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It can win you the game. Um, but this is cool. Yeah, I, I, I can't think of anything I don't like about this. Um, very cheap cost, one, one green. Um, it allows you to you don't even need to play this in a green deck anymore that's the crazy thing about this because mm -hmm. uh the color restrictions are lifted you can play this in any deck that has green as a support color in it not necessarily elrig mm -hmm. um but you get the ability to shuffle the cards in your trash to to uh your deck look there's nice. all, there's already there's already um decks that are running innocent battle to avoid getting milled damage mm -hmm. this does it and rewards you by enter charging you two, or drawing you two, or some mix of that, right? Because mm -hmm. you're, you're grabbing those cards from the enter. Um, and giving you S Lancer. Yeah, this is perfect in the late game. Yeah. This is this is your do or die win condition. Mm -hmm. Like, this will do it. Um, I love this. I, I love that it pr uh, protects you from milling out. I love that it enter charges you two. Um, especially because if you're running... Like, if you're running Disona Signy, um, and you're running low on Enter, mm -hmm. this will be able to, like, uh, what's it called? Um, then put two target Disona Signy from your Enter zone onto your field. Yeah, if you've got the cards in hand, you technically don't have to put any. If yeah, you don't have to. Dissona. This is just, like, a really great green piece. Yeah. Finally. It just does, it does a lot of things. It, green is mostly known, at least in my opinion, for ignoring what your opponent does or saying, like, I don't really care that you're doing that. I'm just going to shoulder my way through anyways. And this gives you S Lancer, which shoulders its way through. If you've been Enter burned, it, it recharges your Enter. If, it, if you've been discarded, you've gotten more cards. you got access to more cards now mm -hmm. by toolboxing your Enter here. And it also... Shuffles all of your cards in your from your uh, trash to your deck, which is great for green because enter charge mills yourself out pretty quickly as well. Mm -hmm. So so it also defies those mill expectations. You're like your opponent usually thinks I have to mill the opponent fifteen in order to get my mill damage. Yeah, it's probably more like twenty five now. Yeah, you know, or thirty. Yeah. Um. So so yeah, this 
This is exciting. This is excellent. This is just a great utility piece while simultaneously offering you damage. Did we clarify that that when colored costs are called out, they still have to be paid with those colors? Correct. Yeah. So even though the, the color changing, the color rules have been lifted, if a cost says specifically you have to yeah. pay a green, you still have to pay it with green. Yes. So you can't just put this in a deck that has no green in it to pay for the cost and you can't play it. Right. That being said, you could run, for example, a blue or a blue, red, white um, centers, centers and assists. And you could be running two bang for werewolf, mm -hmm. right? And you could use this. That's that's a reliable yeah, enough splash would, it, even though you're the, not those colors. Yeah, you would have the colored enter to pay for it. Yep. Yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, do you want to read the next sure. one? Sure. Unbalanced Dance by, uh, with Hanyo in the center there. Unbalanced Dance gives the following ability uh, for the cost of red and colorless. Um, you need to have a dream team, same as the last time, uh, three more different colors. If there are three disown a signy on your field, vanish all signy on your opponent's field, and then target up to two uh, enter, two of your opponent's enter that do not share a color with their center L rig and put it to the trash. Mm -hmm. uh, it's good. It's good. I think you and I have a different opinion on this piece. So that when we checked on it, I think you think it's very good. I think I think it's marginal. I mean, so the the two the two enter cost of it does make it more expensive. However, the way that I read this is for, because if you're going to be playing Disona, you should just play all Disona. Correct. Like, maximize that amount. So what this says to me is, um, pay two, mm -hmm. vanish all Signy on your opponent's field, and then, um, enter burn your opponent too. Mm -hmm. So, for two enter, you are setting your opponent back four cards. You know, I'm coming around to it as you as you speak to it. I but but because mostly <laughs> point for me. <laughs> mostly for a different for a, for a weirdly different reason. I've been looking at this like an aggro piece, which mm -hmm. I, it definitely functions as an aggro piece. Look, look, hitting five cards. Sorry, two two paying two enter to vanish out the entire field and then enter burn them two is very good. Um. My thought was that if you're playing red, you probably can open up the field anyways. And mm -hmm. This is kind of a waste of of a piece. It has the enter burn stuff, but outside of the enter burn stuff, you were already able to open up fields. Mm -hmm. I actually think this might actually be interesting in a more slower mid range or or a control deck. Yeah, like wipe off the field, right? The, where you've never been able having, to do that. Having game. sudden access to just ending your opponent very quickly could be more interesting in one of those slower decks that people wouldn't be expecting it. And mm -hmm. and you, playing the red cost is not that hard. Yeah. That's that's my opinion on the piece. I think I think that you're gonna see more people playing this than not. Yep. Um because of the ability to just wipe the field and enter burn too. Yeah, I think like you're still that's... gonna give them one enter though, because you're wiping the field. You're giving them thirty vanishing well, you're three. You're giving them three enter, <laughs> but then you're taking two of it away. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's basically a pop plus. So for clearing the entire field, you're only giving your opponent one enter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm mm -hmm. not disagreeing with you. I'm Anyways. just saying it's the thing. Um I think it's powerful. Uh, personally I think there are better pieces out there. I think Lights sure. in the Dark is insane value. Uh that's where I'm standing with this aggression. I'm really excited about Lancer in the Dark. <laughs> um that's all we got time for uh on this podcast uh this next is week. the end of part one yeah next week we'll we'll go over the other packages that you can have trust me there's uh, about nine more slides left and we've gone through nine slides here so uh, we have a whole packed podcast for the next one mm -hmm. so please make sure that you uh subscribe so you don't miss part two of this incredibly stacked upcoming season basically a soft, a soft refresh i think i think so too yeah. Um, and let us know what you think so far in the comment section down below. Uh, we look forward to reading all of your comments. And as always, may you always flip a life burst. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys.